or so in the speeds, and then they're going to have to jam this thing down to about 90 miles an hour to get around these turns. Brakes are a concern. Brakes have always been a problem there. We see a lot of people go there into turn one. They are brakes not running, you know, um, you know, go to the full board, and they just go up into the wall. So we get a lot of incidents that way. They're going to have to survive that. It, it's a lot of braking, a lot of acceleration, all at the same time, G-forces for these drivers that they're going to experience. But today and tomorrow, is, um, is the, load, the G-forces and the loads on these cars are definitely going to, going to pit them to man versus machine to some degree. They're all going to have to take care of this. Tires are always an, ex, uh, always an issue where we've seen tire, uh, tires in the past go out because of the load rates that are put down on, on the cars. And for for teams, they're, they're just going to have to be mindful of this. They're going to have to make their adjustments. It's going to be a long race for them today and tomorrow. Well, absolutely. Kurt Busch gets P1 out there for tomorrow's race. Let's break down the big boys' Monster Energy uh, Cup Series uh, racing for the lobster, sir, uh, up there in New Hampshire. See, I got I to gotta use the lingo, New Hampshire. Uh, you know, also uh, getting off in the weeds just a little bit, but it feels kind of weird uh, that here we are getting toward the end of July. We're not talking about the brickyard in Indianapolis, obviously, because it's moved back uh, further on in the year. A little weird for us here in Indianapolis, uh, but certainly uh, 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 NASCAR moves on through the series, and I, I think there was a lot of reasons for that change, and we'll see how that affects. I, I mean, really, I would to see the attendance get boosted here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That's certainly a classic race that a lot of people, but it just, for whatever reason, it's just kind of took a nosedive as far as attendance goes, so maybe moving it later on. Unfortunately, it bumps up on opening day uh, with the cold, so we'll see uh, how that split between locals uh, as far as diehard NASCAR fans and diehard uh, Colts fans, especially those that are both like myself, which decision do they make? I, I plan on to be at the race, uh, but certainly, uh, you know, that that's going to be a, a factor as well. So hopefully uh, the NASCAR can get this figured out with Indianapolis. Would hate to see uh, Indianapolis lose this race. I don't think they're in any danger of that. But at the same time, uh, I think across the board, we're seeing uh, the, the fan base just kind of decline from what we've seen in years past. So hopefully NASCAR uh, begins to take uh, initiative to, to turn that around like IndyCar has been very successful and been able to do uh, as, as we're seeing their numbers go up. Unfortunately, with NASCAR, we're seeing numbers go down. If you can feel free to comment on that, but that was just a side comment. Uh, but certainly, uh, I believe Kurt Busch got the P1 uh, spot there in London. So talk with us about uh, uh, the other thoughts that you may have, sir. Well, in respect to Indianapolis, if 65 or 70,000 people show up at Indianapolis, which seems to be about average of a lot of these races these days, everybody could have their own, you know, their own road to themselves, and the place looks dead <laughs> because, you know, the true. place is designed to hold 350,000 people. So you stick 60 or 70,000 people in that place, and it looks like there's nobody there. Um, so, you know, there's always that at the same time. It's not that sometimes people aren't showing up. It's that, you know, that place isn't designed to hold 60,000, so it looks bad to some degree. Now, as far as the Xfinity Series event there, um, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, we, we've seen, you know, that that has paid off to any degree. Um, what was it, last year, year before, what did they say? Maybe 100 people showed up to that thing. Um, it was so, bad. you know, that, that's not really... Yeah, that's. I mean, that's not good for Indianapolis. That's not good for the Xfinity Series. That's not good for a sport in general. I know a lot of people were angry they that they moved away from IRP. And yeah, exactly. uh, maybe it, that a return back there should be, uh, you know, a priority. Well, absolutely, and I think everybody has said that. I, I know I'm a homer here. It's no longer a IRP. It's a Lucas Oil Raceway, uh, obviously very well known for NHR in, in, the, in the U.S. Nationals there, uh, which is their Indianapolis 500, if you will, by, or Daytona 500, uh, but it's at that track. But, yeah, to, to take that away, and then they had the truck series there, too, to take that away as well. It, it, it was kind of a, you know, if you're a homer like me here in Indianapolis, it was kind of a, a shot in the gut here. So let's get back on track, no pun intended. Uh, uh, talk with us a little bit about what does NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series uh, have to do? Who are you looking at? Uh, what are your dark horses? What are the challenges? What are the strategies uh, for London tomorrow? London, New Hampshire, that is. 
I'm liking Joe Zagano right at this moment. He's won up there multiple times, and um, he seemed to figure some things out there over the years in this Penske car. Kurt Busch, most definitely. Him being back up front again, I mean, that shows that this team is kind of turning around, but they still don't have a win this year. They need a win. Um, and I think they should throw everything to the wind and try and get that, you know, that win. I mean, they're secured in the top 16 right at this moment, but they don't have a whole lot of playoff points. They don't have a lot to carry them through once we get past Indianapolis um, this year where the cutoff is going to be. And to go back to, you know, Andy for a minute, um, Kurt Busch, that team need to kind of turn this thing around. Sure, they've had this uh, second pole of the season for them and first time up in New Hampshire, but they need to kind of start at this point throwing everything to the wind. They're either going to win these races or they're going to collect some points, and I think that's where they're getting to the point right now because they need every point that they can get. Um you know, I think Martin Truex Jr. again. He's a, he's won there last year, and I think that again these mile mile and half race race play right into his uh, and that team's uh, pocket, and this is what they're looking for. They look for these events when they come to them. It races like a short track, but you get a lot of speeds like an intermediate track. So I think it's a combination of a lot of different drivers are going to have an opportunity. But they're going to have to, again, they're going to have to worry about these load rates of being put on the tires and braking issues that are that are going to be a persistent problem throughout the day. Talking about Kurt Busch, I know he's, he's looking for a new deal with uh, Stuart Haas Racing. Obviously, he's the uh, primary uh, driver uh, there uh, for uh, Stuart Haas. Uh, what what does that look at Kurt Busch uh, looking for a new deal that would keep, uh, keep him in the Stuart Haas Racing fold? Um, as Monster Energy again on board with the uh, primary primary energy, I mean primary sponsor. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, you think they're going to get that done? Well, they put together this deal for this year, and they're working towards hopefully something in the future. Monster Energy said something here about a week or something back that they were, you know, still in conversations with Stuart Haas Racing. Um, they were happy with what Kurt Busch is doing and the brand that he brings with them and how he markets the brand that he they feel like he fits in very well with that. And, um, you know, if they're going to move forward onto this, Monster Energy after this year only has a one-year deal. So if they decide to do another one-year deal, I think that's where we're maybe possibly going to at this moment. I mean, he's not running bad at all. He's running fairly decent, but... He just doesn't have those wins. He just doesn't have these stage points. And, you know, I think that plays into a lot of decisions sometimes. But, again, Monster Energy isn't, you know, Monster Energy may be on the the Cup Series, the Premier Series in NASCAR. But, again, they, they're they not um, – they're another sponsor that seems to – look for cheaper alternative and cheaper routes to do things. They have very unconventional marketing and marketing dollars than we would see with a Coca-Cola or we see with like an Axoletta or somebody like that. They seem to like um, these drivers that run just well enough that they can make a name and can market, but at the same time, it doesn't cost them, you know, a Joe Gibbs or Hendrick type of uh, marketing budget. Steve Wilson of Speedway Digest, our official NASCAR contributor. Final word here, final thought. Uh, Ty Dillon, Little Dillon, as we as we affectionately refer to him, Austin Dillon, and then you got Little Dillon, uh, Ty Dillon, uh, says he's committed to stay with uh, Jermaine uh, Racing. They're having some struggles over there. Uh, certainly that uh, uh, hasn't yielded the results it had hoped for. Um, but I, I guess Ty Dillon really isn't uh, second uh, guessing his decision to join the RC, uh, RCR affiliate. I'm sorry. And uh, feels very confident uh, that he can uh, that they can turn the curve. That, at least that's what he said in a recent interview with uh, ESPN. Ty Dillon uh, committed to Jermaine Racing. Some issues going on there. What are your thoughts? Um, you know, Jermaine Racing really needs a Jermaine, stronger sorry. partnership, and it's not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they they need a stronger partnership. To be honest. Um, their performance level is still the same as it was with Casey Mears in the car. And that's nothing against, you know, you know, a lot of different players into this, but they need a stronger partnership. They need a partnership that is going to be able to build some of these cars a little bit better than others. 
and the engineering and technical side of it too is also going to play, I think, into some decisions. But as far as Ty Dillon, you're right. I think he's happy, happy where he is. Um, he could use some help, and hopefully he'll get that help shortly or, you know, in the immediate term because um, they they need it. I think they need to run better in a lot of these places that we traditionally would see Richard Childress Racing running better. And uh, right now, um, yeah, I think I think for him, it, it, he's, he's locked in for right now. Geico seems happy. Jermaine seems happy. But right now, I think they just need some better technical and car support at this moment. Absolutely. We've been speaking with Spe- uh, Steve Wilson, editor-in-chief of Speedway Digest, our official NASCAR contributor. Steve, we thank you. I hope you get to feel better. Where can people find your work and your masterpieces, sir? You can follow me at Speedway Digest on Twitter, Facebook.com, forward slash Speedway Digest, and SpeedwayDigest.com. Thanks, buddy. Get, get to feeling better. Thanks. Take care. Thanks. Steve Wilson, our official NASCAR contributor, giving us a call, talking NASCAR, going on up there in New Hampshire, chasing the lobster. My name's Tom Mark Russell, Presidente, myself, executive producer of The Balance. Rick Riggin joins us. We're going to be talking about our poll that's posted up on The Balance, and we're going to get into our pre-college football talk, our college football preview, if you will. And, well, it's all coming around the corner right here on The Balance Radio Network. Be right back. Is that your ugly ass friend? I cannot preach. I cannot preach. I gotta show them how I can get it in. First, take your sip, sip. do your dip, dip. spend your money like money ain't shit. Ooh, ooh, we too fresh. Got to blame it on Jesus. The Air National Guard is a reserve component of the United States Air Force and serves alongside active duty Air Force members in times of a national crisis. In addition, the Air Guard serves the state and local community in a wide range of capacities. The reason people join the Air Guard is as diverse as our members and includes such reasons as a deep desire to serve their country, money for college, travel, new job skills, and the pride that goes along with belonging to the greatest military organization in the world. I joined because I felt a calling to serve my country, but I didn't want to be far away from my family, so the Indiana Air National Guard was a perfect fit for me. With over 95 different career opportunities to choose from and 100% paid college tuition to any state-funded college, why not give us a call? Call 1-800-841-3103 or visit online at goang.com to find out more. Again, that's 1-800-841-3103. The Air National Guard, guarding America, defending freedom. It's double trouble, double the fun. At African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio, see the largest antelope on Earth, the giant eland, and the ugliest creature on Earth, the African warthog. There's so much to see and do, including the Midwest's only drive through safari. Feed the animals. See live educational shows. Feel the excitement. Have your picture taken with a python or cockatoo. Feel the adventure. Shop the Simba Lodge gift shop with items available from around the globe. Visit the snack bar or picnic facilities. Enjoy a pony or camel ride. Or cheer your favorite porker on to victory in the famous Pork Chop Down. Bring your family to see the rare and exotic animals at African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio. Just take Route 2 to the Route 53 North exit and follow the sign. Only 17 miles west of Cedar Point via Route 6. Open every day, rain or shine. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you can save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be hard. Like early 90s heavy metal hard. I'm yelling and screaming and I'm loud. Roar. Geico makes it easy. You can review and update your policy or report a claim on Geico.com or the Geico mobile app. Because shouldn't we all have a little less stress in our lives? 